thank you for joining me. When I am asked, what is the Alexander Technique? I am reminded of Alexander's own definition later in his life, conscious control of human reaction. The work is a conscious effort to grow and deepen our understanding of our particular habits and more generally, the force of habit. F.M. Alexander embarked on his great journey of detective work on himself with, as the saying goes, one eye open and one eye closed. He did not realize at the outset what a nearly impossible task he was facing. The object of his study and the evaluator of his study were one and the same, himself. He had no objective instrument of measurement, no microscope, no telescope, no computer, no lab animals, no chemistry beakers, no control group. All he had was a mirror. He had to test at every step of the way whether this instrument himself was capable of giving him accurate feedback. To be successful required extraordinary powers of observation, of self-observation, and of reasoning. Fortunately, Alexander possessed all three. He asked over and over again the crucial question, what happens when? Three little words with huge implications. The details of his journey are chronicled in the chapter called The Evolution of a Technique in his book, The Use of the Self, highly recommended. In this short talk, I do not intend to summarize his journey but to suggest to interested musicians to read this chapter and to consider using it as a model for the study of their own habits, as I have done for 30 years. The craft of learning an instrument has a series of steps from the most basic to the most complex. In order to apply these three words, what happens when, to my own process of relearning, I broke down these steps into the simplest sequences. As a cellist, I'll give you a couple of examples. What happens when I prepare to sit in my cello chair? And I mean not to individual parts of me, but to all of me. What happens to my attention to the head neck back relationship? what Alexander called the primary control, as the thought of sitting is initiated. The question of what happens when shifts the focus from getting a correct sitting position to an ongoing process of self-observation, self-remembering, self-awareness. Our aim here is to attend to our thinking process as we prepare to move, what means whereby we use for this purpose, and not to the end result of correct sitting posture. Picking up a bow is another step. Instead of learning this step as a function of instrumental technique, I turn the conventional learning process on its head. What happens to me when I go to pick up my bow? Am I able to connect to the power of the primary control into, throughout, and beyond the movement of picking up the bow? Where is my thinking in the moment-to-moment -moment process? The steps involved in learning to play or sing link up all the way into the performance and the interpretation of a piece of music, our ultimate goal as musicians. In the linking of those steps, the three little words, what happens when, are fundamental. Before closing, I'd like to acknowledge that for musicians who are in full career flow and have played or sung for many years, it is a huge challenge to undo habits. 
Now, if that's you, lest you lose heart already and head for the fridge, you should know that Alexander, in his performance mode, kept on repeating those habits in himself, which exist below the conscious level. Why? Because they felt right and familiar to him, despite his best intentions not to allow them to predominate. He called it subconscious misdirection. We musicians have a name for it too. We call it muscle memory. Your starting point will be the same as Alexander's, addressing your habits and your muscle memory. The journey may be longer because the habits are more ingrained. However, don't give up. Along with a good teacher, your powers of self-observation and self-remembering will see you through. These powers will not fail you if you give them a chance to work.